There are so many hidden smart home features on your phone right now that you probably don't even know about. I was surprised at some of the things I uncovered and I can't wait to show you. Like, did you know you can use different voice assistants on Android and iOS? Yeah, it's extremely useful. You know, what if you use another smart home system like Amazon or Home Assistant? Or maybe you just don't like the voice assistant that came with your phone. Well, you can change that. With Android, it's really easy. You just select the digital assistant from the settings and you can swap it out. Maybe you use Amazon for your smart home and you want to talk to her. Turn on candle light. Okay. Or Home Assistant has been building their own open source voice assistant and you can talk straight to that. It's not perfect because you still have to hit the mic button for Home Assistant. At least that's how it's working for me on my phone right now. What's surprising is third-party voice assistants not only work on iPhones, but actually work really well, especially if you have the new action button. You can map the iPhone 15's action button to open up Google Assistant using an Apple shortcut. You don't have to type anything and you can just hold down the button and start talking. Crazy, right? Google Assistant on an iPhone, which also has USB-C now. I mean, what is this world we live in? If you don't have a new iPhone, no worries. You can just use a double or triple tap on the back to do the same thing. So don't feel left out if you have an older iPhone. And it gets even better. If you use Home Assistant, you can use that action button or the tap to talk straight to that voice assistant. And it works so well. It does this by triggering an Apple shortcut that Home Assistant gives you on their website. You don't have to hit a mic button or a send button when you're done. It's amazing. And I've been using it all the time to control Home Assistant devices and trigger automations. It's so fast and easy to use. Honestly, after using this, I don't know if I need smart voice assistant speakers in every room anymore. No way. Of course I belong here. In your bathroom. If you have a smartwatch, you can change the voice assistant as well. With either the Pixel Watch or Wear OS, you can swap the default voice assistant for when you hold down the physical button. It works better than the phone, but you do have to hit a send button, which is annoying. You can also trigger it from a button on the watch face. The Apple Watch can only trigger third-party voice assistants from a button on the screen. There's a lot of taps, and I wish it was as easy to use as the phone. All right, voice assistants are great, but what if you just want to access smart home buttons as quickly as possible? Well, I got some tricks up my sleeve. So I've tried the Google Pixel phone stand that can display your favorite smart devices when your phone is on the charger. It's okay, and you have to tap the screen to see the devices. But there's a better way, and it doesn't even have to be exclusive to Google Pixel. You can customize your lock screen to have a smart home device button right there in the corner. And what's maybe not so obvious and slightly hidden is the third-party apps you can use with this. That's right, you can add third-party smart home apps like Home Assistant and have that be the default. It's fast and extremely convenient. To me, it's just as easy to use as a Pixel stand since you have to tap the screen anyways. And it's probably the fastest way you can control Home Assistant devices on Android. With iOS, you can also add a button on your lock screen to quickly open up your Apple Home app or even a specific Home Assistant dashboard page using a shortcut. It's really fast to use. But if you want to stay in your current app, use the Apple shortcut menu option with the action button. Remember when I used this a few videos ago to help me save time? Well, you can use it to run smart home scenes. And I love how fast you can use it no matter what you're doing on your phone. Tapping the back is a great option to trigger this too, and the tapping works surprisingly well. Give it a little tappy. Tap, tap, tap a room. Now when it comes to widgets, there are some useful features that you might not be using. But first, I want to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Extra Wallets, which I've been using every day for a year now, and I seriously love my wallet. Even though I did accidentally drop it on asphalt recently. Whoops. But hey, it's still working great. And the durability matters since it has this button that fans out your cards. Well, my wallet's button still works perfectly. And I love how I can easily see all of my cards and the cards don't accidentally slide out. Even after one year, the wallet holds the cards just like a new one does. I've been using their carbon fiber wallet, but I like some of the other colors of the aluminum version. This blue one might be my favorite. And the design is slim enough to easily fit my pocket. No George Costanza wallet here. I also use their key holder for my keys, and they even sell some cool Bluetooth trackers for both the wallet and keys. 
If you're interested, they have a sale going on right now. And you can use the code SMARTHOMESOLVER at checkout using the link in the description to save you even more. Thanks to Exter for supporting the channel. Okay, back to widgets. On Android, there's one for a Home Assistant template. And what's cool about this is you can display any smart home data right there in easy to read text. Like if all the doors are locked or if any exterior doors are left open. Put that on your spouse's phone and that spouse approval score will break through the ceiling. On iOS, widgets are even more useful. You can have a group of buttons for both Apple Home and Home Assistant. I like to hide these behind other widgets on my home screen since I can still access them quickly. And I use these all the time. Android phones, on the other hand, don't even have widgets for Google Home at all. Crazy, right? But there is a hidden feature to get Google Home routines on your home screen. When you're in a Google Home routine, click on the phone button in the top right. Now they're quickly accessible. One of my favorite features lately is standby mode in iOS 17. If you don't know what it is, when your phone is on any charger and it's horizontal, it will launch standby mode. There are lots of useful displays you can choose from and you can add smart home buttons. Just hold down on the display to add buttons and you can even add multiple pages if you want. I like displaying info I glance at all the time, but having the buttons one swipe away because it's still really fast to access. This is quickly replacing my traditional smart displays. It takes up almost no room on the desk, it's fast, keeps my phone charged up while I'm using it, and I can use the voice assistant. I love it! Android has some third-party options for this, but none of them I tried had smart home controls. Oh, and I'm using a MagSafe case for the Pixel phone I found on Amazon. It works great, it's inexpensive, and I'll link it and everything else down below. I want to show you a serious hidden gem on Android phones, but first, we have to talk about sound detection on iOS. Because there are actually tons of different sounds iPhones and iPads can detect. Not only can you get alerted, but you can run Apple shortcuts from the sound detection. With Amazon starting to charge a monthly fee for Amazon Guard, this seems like a nice alternative. And Android doesn't seem to have sound detection. If you want to detect sounds like smoke or CO alerts, you can buy the $100 Nest Protect or use your Google Smart Displays. Unfortunately, you have to pay the monthly fee for Nest Aware to detect smoke and CO alarms on the smart speakers. So it's nice that Apple has this included with their HomePods for free. Well, for now anyways. Oh, and I accidentally triggered this the other night when I was watching the movie Pulp Fiction. You know when Butch goes back to his apartment and the smoke detector's going off? It alerted Allie when she was asleep. Yeah, that was fun. Now where Android really shines is being more open to integrate with third-party apps. And if you want to unlock lots of hidden features, pair it with Home Assistant. There are tons, I mean tons of hidden sensors available to use for home automation when you have an Android phone. And for some reason, many, if not all, are off by default and it's kind of hidden to enable them. But once you do, it opens the doors to hundreds of automations available. Like if you answer your phone, your smart home can detect that and automatically turn down your smart speakers if they're playing music. There are sensors like what Bluetooth devices you're currently connected to, if you're charging your phone, and it even knows if you're wirelessly charging, so you can run automations based on that. The list of sensors on your Android phone is very long, and it can be extremely useful when you need it. iOS has some of these sensors too, but there's not as many. Like you can tell if you're charging, but not if you're wirelessly charging. But iOS does have Apple shortcuts, and there are some extremely powerful hidden features for your smart home. For example, someone asked me recently how they could run an automation when they receive an email from their kid's school when the bus drops them off at the stop. Apple shortcuts can be triggered from a specific email and it works really well. I would definitely scroll through all the shortcut automation options and see what's possible, especially since you can easily link it up and control your Apple Home or Home Assistant devices from an Apple shortcut. I showed some ideas in my latest home automation video that I'll link below. You know, sometimes it feels like these new phones are getting a little boring, but it's surprising to see how many hidden gems there are to use with your smart home. Hopefully you found this video helpful, and if you know of any other tips for using your phone with your smart home, let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching. Well, Reed is a total Apple sheep, so he likes my widgets. Who can blame him? Apple was the first to put them on phones in 2020. Uh, sure for iPhones, but other phones do exist, like Android in 2008 with widgets. Just thinking about Android in 2008 makes me throw up in my mouth a little bit. You're feeling sick? Maybe you should leave your walled garden and get some fresh air. Sure. 
I will visit the Google graveyard of killed projects. Now wait one second. Nest secure. Google whoa, Home whoa, Max. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Drop cam. Stadia. Okay, okay. Stop you cold-hearted slab of glass. You know what? I'm just going to say it. Your all-new design looks just like the iPhone 14. Apple said it's all new in the keynote. Blue Steel, Magnum, iPhone 15, iPhone 14. They all look the same. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills.